Only mother of children, your kindness nurtures the whole wide world. You are the thread that can be used to show the hearts of boys and girls who have never felt the love and comfort of their mother's warm arms. You are the lullaby that can soothe and make the vast oceans calm. Oh, endless tune, what's made you choose to let go the peace of your heart? Oh, the mother of children, your kindness nurtures the whole wide world. You are the thread that can be used to show the hearts of boys and girls who have never felt the love and comfort of their mother's warm arms. You are the lullaby that can soothe and make the vast oceans calm. Oh, endless tune, what's made you choose to let go the peace of your heart? Oh, the mother who was blessed to mother the great Imam Hussein. But Imam Hussein would say, I I'm blessed to have this sweet mother For I am amongst those children That are part of her noble name For the son of Ummul Benin Abbas became Hussein's brother The brightest moon Love you can't lose For the mother of all children Oh, the mother who was blessed to mother the great Imam Hussein. But Imam Hussein would say, I am blessed to have this sweet mother. For I am amongst those children that are part of her noble name for the son of Ummul Benin Abbas became Hussein's brother the brightest moon love you can't lose for the mother of all children Oh, the one who sacrificed her heart on the day of Ashura, lying your beheaded shroudless sons on the plains of Karbala. You could not visit the grave, so you made some graves in Medina. When they came back to Medina, you asked for the son of Zahra. They said, one son, you said, move on. Your tears broke, ha. your tears broke when they said, Abbas. Your hearts broke when they said, Hussein. 
O oh, the one who sacrificed her on on the day of Ashura, lying your beheaded, shroudless sons on the plains of Karbala. You could not visit the grave, so you made some graves in Medina. When they came back to Medina, you asked for the son of Zahra. They said, one son. You said, move on. Your tears broke when they said, Abbas. Your hearts broke when they said, Hussein. Your hearts broke when they said, Hussein. Ahsantum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa Muhammad. Peace be upon Imam Hussain uh, and his uh, mother Umm al uh, We have about 10 minutes left, Sayyid Ali. Um, so uh, before I, uh, inshallah, will recite some poetry of my own, if you give me the permission to, um, how does it feel, uh, to ha what kind of connection do you have as a reciter to Umm al Islam, knowing that she mm. is almost the mother of recitation at Majalis? Mm, yeah, so uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Umm al actually, I have a very, uh, very close connection with her when it comes from my part. And I hope that she acknowledges and sees the efforts that we put in terms of the service of the Ahlul Bayt for her children. Um, when I was actually in university, um, I met a, a dear friend, and he always told me, "Just ask Umm Al-Banin, ask her, and it will, it will, it will just happen. One way or another, it will happen for your benefit, whether it's in your favor or something that's better for you. Because mm. of course, she's a very, very, very strong interceder for, uh, in terms of the uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for us." So, you know, during university times, I, asked, I needed exam results, that's so why I needed to pass so I can obviously work and live, etc. So, you know, I gave it a go, you know. So what I did was, I, I do a fatha before my exam, and no matter what happens during the exam, whether I think I messed up, whether I think I passed, I always read a fatha at the end. Mm. So this has become a habit for me during my exams. And Alhamdulillah, Shukran University went quite smoothly. Now, um, at the same time, I feel like, we can, they, they say in the, our ulama, they say, ask, ask the Ahlul Bayt, they certainly will give. So, of course, this power of asking Umm al Banin, I felt was transcended into her son, Abu Fadl Abbas. This is why he's considered Bab al Hawa'ij. He's the individual that you go to if you had something that you really need to, and it could be literally anything, anything that's causing you problems in this life. You just go and ask them. So, Alhamdulillah, Shukur, you know, I was, was hoping to get married. Um, and um, of course, you know, f of the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, well, we try and be lovers of the Ahlul Bayt. I wanted a woman who was um, uh, Husseiniyah. So, um, you know, the only person to go to is Imam Hussein for that. So I went, I was in Karbala last year in, Sept, uh, in, in Ashura. Um, it was actually um, the night before Arba'in. So this is a quite a personal thing, but you know, this is a story that inshallah, hopefully not something for, for me to gain, but for hopefully others to reflect upon, just to see how the power of these the individuals of the Ahlul Bayt. So, um, you know, I'm not, I, spoke with, I spoke to Abu Fadl Abbas, I spoke to uh, Imam al Hussein, and I asked them for a lady who can um, represent the Ahlul Bayt alongside me and give me children um, who are lovers of the Ahlul Bayt. And the next day on um, Arba'in, I actually met my wife. Oh, mashallah, that's amazing. On Arba'in day. That's amazing story. And that followed through, and nine months later, we got married. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, it just goes to show um, that if you really need something, don't think that they won't. Because some people are pessimistic. Mm. They really are with these things. They think, oh, I don't know. You know I, I might ask, but you know, they're just they're dead now. They're a grave. You know, I need to ask. I need to do it myself. Mm. You know, no, no. Allah says, do what you can. But the du see, there's a few things that can change the outcome of the future, mm. and one of the key things is a du'a. Mm. Ask Allah. But sometimes our du'a is not accepted because of, of our sins. It says in du'a kumail, which we read tonight, of our sins, Allah So du'a, please, O oh Lord, forgive me of the sins which block off my du'a. Mm. We obviously we try and stop sins, but we've got individuals here who can just do the job, mm. and we ask them to do the job for us because they are the individuals who are cl much closer to Allah. They're the infallibles. Mm. So if you want something happened, go ask them. And once you ask them, you'll start building, building a connection with them. Mm. 
So it will be a very strong connection. So through the du'as you can build. So alhamdulillah. Actually, shukran. I mean, you mentioned uh, Fatah from Benin Alayhi Salam. And, and uh, before I start, I just want to mention a brief story that my friend uh, mm. told me as well. And, and for those of you who don't know, I'm sure all of you watching know. But whenever you lose something, they say, to do recite Fatah from Benin and you get it back. Um, and subhanAllah, um, you know, it's always, it seems to have always worked for me so far. A friend of mine was, was uh, narrating this story a few years ago. He was in Arba'in as well. Um, and he got on the plane to go back to Dubai uh, and he couldn't find his laptop. No um, and, he, and, and everyone was telling him, just recite oh, Fatah from Benin, recite Fatah. And he was like, look, it's, a, it's obviously been stolen by now. You know, no one's going to, you know, just forget it. I'm not, but they kept saying, recite Fatah from Benin. He goes, you know what, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. Fine, I'll just recite Fatah from Benin. He did it. When they got to Dubai, I think it was the same day or the next day, um, he met the hotel owner of the person who was in the hotel in Karbala. He said, brother, you left your laptop behind in Karbala, so no I flew in to, <laughs> to bring you a laptop, subhanAllah. Ajay. And that's the story of, of the power of the Fatah of al As I mentioned in the early in the opening of the show, uh, this poem, uh, the poem that I, I finished with, I, I'm sorry, I opened with, finished with Umm al reaching Karbala uh, and finding the flag of Allah Abbas and wearing it as a hijab out of her pride. Obviously, this is a very uh, metaphorical uh, story. Um, but here it continues by saying, Umm al banin held the hands of Abbas feeling grateful. And she wore her hijab using the flag of Abu Father. And with her Lord she conversed saying, Thank you Allah for Abbas. When Allah the Almighty created the stars, He told Umm al banin pick four and they are yours. She would pick three. But in her eyes something glitters. He descends and when he does, the sky it shatters. The flag he holds sings her praises when it flutters. And beside his mother's order, nothing else matters. What a sight when Abbas and Umm al bani would first meet. The, feather, the feathers of Abbas's helmet, they bow down to her feet. She says, O Lord of the universe, thank you Allah for Abbas. Umm al bani was a mother like no other. When she'd walk, a moon and three stars would circle her. If she ever wept, Abbas's flag, it would shudder. If she slept, it stood over her, her protector. Where is the flag that every son gives his mother? You'll find it in the hands of Hussein's flag bearer. Because of Abbas, Umm al banin conquered motherhood. And in return, Umm al banin taught Abbas brotherhood. She'd say in better and worse, Thank you Allah for Abbas. Testifies Allah when Abbas's soul he summons. Only daughters of lions give birth to lions. If when Ali, if when Ali was born the house of God opens, what house is open for Umm al banins four sons? When Muhammad was attacked, Ali's skin toughens. And when Hussein is in fear, Abbas's blood thickens. Like when all ran away and by Muhammad Ali stood, Abbas stands guarding his Hussein like the mountain of Uhud. After those who ran, she'd curse, she says, Thank you, Allah, for Abbas. When Abbas with severed hands was struck upon his head, Umm al banin came and she closed his one eyelid. He'd not fall to the ground, but to her lap instead. She used her tears to wash away the blood that he'd bled. She took his flag and she placed it over her forehead. I wish I had ten more to give away, she said. I wish I had ten like Abbas who could die on this day. All who, when recalling Hussein, what did they throw away? Her prayer was like a descended verse, saying, Thank you, Allah, for Abbas. Umm al banin left this world sunless but proud that the severed heads of her sons had never bowed. This is the only mother ever who had ever vowed that when her son dies, no water he'd be allowed. The grave digger tries to shroud her and her body cries aloud, how can I have a shroud when Hussein had no shroud? Mm. How can I have a shroud when Hussein had no shroud? Umm al banin is laid to rest and, besides her, and beside her grave stands a headless Hussein and her Abbas with two severed hands and her prayer they would rehearse saying thank you Allah for Abbas and her prayer they would rehearse saying thank you Allah for Abbas Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. we send our blessings and our salutations to both Umm al banin to Abu Fadl Abbas and to her master Imam Hussain alayhi salam inshallah we shall not forget you in our prayers it is truly an honor to be here in the holy city of Karbala during the 10 days of Muharram it's truly a magnificent feeling that never fails to hit me every single time I come here and visit the shrine of Imam Hussain and participate in the processions and the martyrdom and 
and doing the art of Imam Hussein every day. And I pray and I truly, truly recommend for all those who are watching, I'm sure many of you have come uh, for ziyar during Arba'in. I truly, truly recommend trying to come uh, for the 10 days of Muharram because subhanAllah when you enter the shrine, of course there is a feeling of sadness, there is a feeling of, uh, of immense heartbreak, but it's so beautiful to see uh, the local families coming uh, to the shrine to witness the muakib, to sit down, uh, watch the processions and watch all, all the martyrs. Almost like when you go towards your local mosque for the majlis of Imam Hussain, but instead here your local mosque is the shrine of Imam Hussain Islam, where you can cry, lament his tragedy, participate in the morning processions, and then as soon as you finished, walk to the grave of Imam Hussain and send your salams to Imam Hussain. So I truly recommend all those who are watching to try and dedicate uh, or try and plan for at least one part of their life one part of your life where you come toward uh, the holy city of Karbala on the 10 days of Muharram. We'll be here every single night trying to bring you the atmosphere of Karbala to all your homes, inshallah, uh, from today until the eve of Ashura. And as the days are getting closer, our hearts are breaking further and further. Uh, and inshallah, tomorrow uh, we'll be back at the same time, which is 10 p.m. UK time, uh, 12 a.m. Karbala time, uh, with uh, the show Welcome to Karbala, where is your chance to call in and send your salutations to Imam Hussain and ask for your wishes live on air, which will be followed by a recitation of Ziyarat al-Ashura by our respected brother Sayyid Ali Hakim. Thereafter, I'll be joining you uh, to host the show with Sayyid Ali Nawab. We are tackling and discussing the story, the journey of Imam Hussain from Medina to Karbala and what lessons we should be taking from that journey what rele and what relevance it has to us today. Uh, and then shall we, the show uh, shall be concluded. Uh, by uh, a Latmiya session by Sayyid Ali Hakim. Inshallah, we'll see you again tomorrow. Please keep listening to us and we'll remember you and us. Uh, Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.